Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Lady Arcaders Super Showcase 2023. I am your host, JPEG, and we have a packed schedule for you tonight. I am so, so excited to be here, especially for this next run, and we are ready to hand over to it. So this is going to be Koo on Yang Phase with Miss Scarlet Tanager and Critique Quartz on Commentary. Miss Scarlet, are you ready to take it away? Well, the floor is yours. All right. So... I am Miss Scarlet Tanager, and as was already said, I'm going to be playing Kuon. I'm kind of known for this game at this point, but because of the last game that we played, um, I went and picked some sage so we could scare away the ghosties. And as you can see, I have my couch rabbits as normal. They are, the white one is uh, Tally, the gray one is Garrus. They like sage because it keeps the way the ghosties have some treats. And let's get started. So the run is going to begin as soon as I get past the... Um, start screen here. We're going to be playing as Sakuya during Yang phase. She is sort of like an exorcist lady person. Um, so time is going to start as soon as I click the yes here in three, two, one, go. All right. So this game is actually by FromSoft, the same people who made Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, all of them fun games. And Yet, it doesn't really look anything like what you think a FromSoft game is like. It sort of plays like a cross between Resident Evil and Fatal Frame, if I had to, like, give it a scripter. Though, instead of, you know, guns and bullets, like in, uh, in Resident Evil, you have spells. And you can see that I have some equipped right now. Thankfully, we're not going to have to use them too much during the run because you generally get rid of most um, combat, or go past most combat, I should say. So I picked up a Guardian Doggo. That's the first of our key items we're going to be picking up. A lot of the game is your standard Resident Evil style. Go pick up random things to unlock other random things to go onwards. So the story of this game is complicated. <laughs> I have played this game so many times and I still cannot make sense of half of what's going on. I am the world record holder in this game and I cannot make sense of what's going on. <laughs> but yeah. So there's, I, I noticed on the load in screen, there's three different characters, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. We have the Kuan incentive, which I know you know has been met, but what about the other character? So the other character is Utsuki, and the game sort of, when you first get the game, um, Abe no Seme, which is the character that you play during Kuan phase, um, you can't actually see her. She's not actually on the screen until you've completed both Yang phase and Yin phase. And even though you can play either Yin or Yang phase, um, first, the game sort of implies that you should probably play Utsuki first because one, she's the cover character on um, the PAL and Japanese regions of the game. <laughs> but, um, and her story sort of makes the least amount of sense and it's sort of implied you play that one first, then play Sakuya to get more of an idea of what's going on, and then you play Kuan phase in order to actually finish up the story. Um, now, as soon as I get rid of this guy who just wants a hug, but we don't like hugs, so we're going to hit him with fire. These are called Gaki. They are sort of like your standard mook enemy in the game. Um, we're not going to worry about him, and we're getting out of here. So, yeah. Um, we're just zooming. Huh? We're just zooming. We're running we're around just zooming. this manner. We're just going. This is a speed run. Gotta go fast. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go fast. Um... So I'm going to pick up an item coming up here. This item here, see if I can get it, there we go. Sometimes because of the way the controls are, you can accidentally just start circling around there instead of actually grabbing the thing. See, like I'm stuck on the wall there. Because the controls are a little bit slippery. This is definitely from the era of FromSoft when um, their controls maybe weren't the best. <laughs> but as for more of the storyline, now, I've got a question. So looking at the area we're in, where would you, like, 
where would you expect? Do you think we're in the mountains? Are we in, you know, a forest? Where, I, where do you think this is? Inside a cave? It's so dark. <laughs> Joke's on you. We're in the middle of a city. What? <laughs> I know, right? Um, you only find this out at the very end of Kuan phase, which you'll see. But yeah, apparently this whole, like, complex and the mountain that you go on later and the forest you go through later uh, is just in a city. <laughs> Because the gate, the um, the gate that I was at at the very beginning, where the um, playthrough started, uh, that gate opens up to just a road in like the middle of uh, Edo Kyoto or something. <laughs> this game doesn't make any sense, and I love it. Okay, I mean, I guess I don't, I don't know much about like this era of Japanese like cities or urban structure so i guess it makes sense oh no it doesn't it, it really doesn't <laughs> so the puzzle that i just did is called the sears puzzle for those who know this game you know why that puzzle oh i actually managed to get out of there that can grab cool um that puzzle is the only difference between the u.s and japanese version and the pal version theoretically the pal version of this game is the fastest version because that puzzle just isn't there I don't know why they got rid of that puzzle, but only in the PAL version of this game. Now, I say theoretically because we don't know if on console it's actually faster because of the difference in uh, load times between PAL consoles and uh, US, Japanese, and TSC consoles. But at the moment, we are just trying to find what's going on. We're sort of like an exorcist lady who was just brought in to come figure out what's going on they lost contact with the people in this manner and then he came in and nobody was around and suddenly there's monsters and blood everywhere that's pretty much the story now if we are playing as utsuki we are we will be playing as the daughter of the dude who owned the daughter of the dude who was hired by the dude who owns this place Okay. Um, yeah, she sort of lives in a temple um, that's in the forest next to the manor. So she's also trying to figure out, like, hey, why? what's going on? Why are all these demons starting to pop up? So she comes with her sister to try and figure out what's going on. Her sister immediately just leaves her. <laughs> so then her, her entire time, at least the first half of her campaign, is just her trying to find her sister. Um, plot twist, we don't like the sister, and you'll find out why soon. The sister is not nice. An evil sibling in a video game. Who could have guessed? Oh, I know, right? Very original from Soft. Not only is she is an evil sister, but she's actually dangerous in this specific phase. <laughs> she's Did actually she she's actually an enemy in Young phase. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But she's not in Utsuki's in a Yin phase. <laughs> She just pops up being creepy all the time. So is there like a chronological order? Is like Yin phase, then Yang phase, and then Kuan phase? Y y yes, um, Yin phase and, hold on. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. You have to do this puzzle in a specific way, not to trigger a glitch that forces you to do the puzzle twice. Okay, I got it. Um, now just to explain that glitch, glitch before I get to the explanation of the bonkers timeline. Um, for some reason, if you go through the tutorial, like, pop-up for that too quickly, the puzzle can bug out, and you'll do the puzzle, and yet the, like, unlock sound won't trigger, and you'll have to do it again. <laughs> and it wastes, like, 10, 15 seconds. But the timeline, oh lordy. Uh, <laughs> the timeline makes zero sense. Makes sense if you just pretend Yin phase doesn't exist. Oh, I almost forgot something. Because if you just take Yang phase, which is what we're playing right now, and then you take Kuan phase, you have a mostly coherent storyline. Yin phase just completely decides no consistency. We don't need that. Um, because both characters, Utsuki and Sakuya, yeah, so both Yin phase and Yang phase go through the same bosses 
the same areas, except in reverse order, at least in the manor. Though Sakuya has more areas than Utsuki, which is why it's a longer run. Um, and... I'll, I'll get to it later, but... Uh, okay, okay, I got past him, cool. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really hard to try and cons explain the, cons the uh, timeline of this game. <laughs> like... Uh, Long story short, um, Kareha's sister is very hungry. Okay. And she likes people. I don't like what you're implying there. Are you implying what I think you're implying? And what she really likes is, uh, is, is, is people eating and the taste of her sister. <laughs> she, at about halfway through the yin phase of this game, it is implied that Kureha and Utsuki merge into one person, which is why it's really hard to actually give a straight answer for what the timeline is. I don't love that, honestly. <laughs> And actually, it took me literally, like, two years of playing this game to figure out that's what happened. <laughs> because the game does not make it obvious that that's what happened. It's just, in, like, one of the last cutscenes, their father refers to Utsuki as the sister, and that's when you're kind of like, oh! <laughs> okay, so you know, uh, with FromSoft games, there's a lot of lore, like, hidden lore. I would like to see, like... That type of video, like you know, the YouTube video of like collection of lore and the fine yeah. coming of it there, for Kuan. There actually is. Um, I can't remember what her name is on YouTube off the top of my head, but there is somebody on YouTube. If you try to like look up Kuan lore, it'll probably pop up. She sort of gives some explanations, and it sort of helped me figure out what in the world was going on. But. Um, so, long story very short. At some point, Utsuki, uh, merges with her sister. Because of the, what's called the Kuan spell. You know, roll okay. credits, it's the name. Um, the Kuan spell is, again, complicated, <laughs> but it's based off of a, uh, Japanese myth about, this is gonna sound really weird, mulberry trees and silkworms. Trust me, it makes just as much sense as it sounds like. So, silkworms pretty much only eat the leaves of mulberry trees. This area, this whole mansion area, has two mulberry trees. But plot twist, they're demon mulberry trees. They're evil. So the demons that possess these trees um, sort of lure people into getting into these silk-covered wicker baskets after they've been critically injured or killed. And that's what starts the Kuan spell. The Kuan spell is they have to merge with creatures in incremental sizes, starting off with a silkworm cocoon. And each creature gets bigger and bigger and bigger until they have to start eating people. Once they do that nine times, they get reborn as a new demon mulberry tree. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I what told you this game the... makes no sense. <laughs> was there like originally one mulberry tree and then eventually there was a second one and it's only been completed like once? Like... Um, yeah, the, the twins... Which you'll see the twins a little bit. You see the twins more in Utsuki's playthrough. Um, the twins are... They, they refer to anybody who goes through the Kuan spell as their children. It's, anyway, we'll get back to that in a bit. I have a boss fight. Oh, fair. Okay, so this is Lord Fujiwara, and I'm going to focus and then I'll explain the fight. Oh, right, I forgot to heal. Come on, game. Behave. There we go. I'm on the back rhythm. 
the best fight I've ever had. So that may not have made sense, um, that fight there. So it looked like a bunch of my attacks were going through him. That's because this game has absolutely ridiculous iframes. Now, we love FromSoft, right? Of course. You know how they tend to have just unfair fights sometimes, or yep. at least they feel like they're unfair whether or not they actually are? I've Platinum Bloodborne, yeah. Yeah. Um, this game has some of that, but it's not because it was designed that way. It's because this game may look stable. It's not. Oh. Um, the It is almost... It is extremely difficult to tell when characters have iframes or invincibility frames and when they don't. I've sort of managed to figure out when they have iframes for most of the attacks, which is why you heard me counting. But as you can see, because I got off of my rhythm, about half of my attacks in the beginning until I got my rhythm back, missed. Because they went straight through him. Because while he's moving backwards, while he's... Sometimes while he's just chilling, uh, he can't be hit. You can't really tell when or how, unless you've played this game enough to just sort of get the rhythm for it. Which is why I was counting. But anyway, we just found a girl named Ayako. She ran away from us because she was scared, because she's in a building full of demons. I mean, do you blame her? However, that bell that we got from Lord Fujiwara, well, we just went and uh, said hi to her. Um, but because we went to go say hi to her, uh, she got eaten by the sister. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to have to focus here for a second. This guy shouldn't be here. This happens sometimes if I'm unlucky. But sometimes he's further up on the uh, further up on the corridor so I don't have to actually kill him, but he decided to be rude today, so I had to. Alrighty. Hello friend, please go away. Alright. So do you got any more questions about the game? <laughs> I so many. Um, Please tell me, because I know way too much about this game. Um, so on the start screen, I saw there were a bunch of different options when you selected Yang Fei's yes. uh, the difficulty. Can you tell me about that? Does it actually impact the run? It does. Um, there is a I can't remember what the difficulty is called, but there is a um, one of the difficulties or one of the options makes it so if you get hit nine times is a game over i think it's nine um and that's like period so healing items don't matter <laughs> um the higher difficulties insomnia is the lowest difficulty which is the one that we generally speed run on um but on higher difficulties you're going to die much faster your meditatability which you saw me use um after the fight is reduced, I believe, though I'm not entirely sure on that. The meditatability actually is the reason why this game is a lot, it's really easy to learn. It may not seem like it, but if you press R1, uh, you have an instant, almost instant, uh, heal that you can use at any time. It doesn't cost anything, and it's a free get out of jail free card. But the problem with it is you have to be stationary while you're using it. So if you try using oh. it during a fight, you're gonna get you're gonna get hit, which then you know you end up losing. You end up getting a game over. Um, but usually, if I wasn't doing if I was doing this as a record attempt or something, I would only use the meditate ability at one very specific moment. Excuse you. Um, which would be later in the game, but because we're trying to be safe, I mean, why not take why not take advantage of the full heal? So this, you may see that my screen has gotten a little wibble wobbly. That is called vertigo. I forgot to explain that earlier. 
Vertigo happens in one of two situations. Oh, come on. Stop, oh, man. Why are you doing this to me, huh? She's just decided she doesn't want to run anymore. Um, vertigo is when the screen goes wibble wobbly. There's two ver versions of it. One is when you interact something scary. You know, that little flashing that happened on the screen for a second there with the tinging sound. That is called a vertigo event. Um, they happen at set areas, so I avoid all of the ones that I can avoid. And there'll be a moment later that I'll point out specifically. But the second version of Vertigo is the one that's dangerous. Because Vertigo is also what happens when you're one hit from death. Which is nice because it's a very visual reminder of, hey, you should probably heal. But it also makes your screen, screen go all funky, which is less than ideal. So hopefully we don't see any of that version of Vertigo. But I'm going to definitely be picking up some extra health items along the way, specifically because of that. Uh, speaking of items, I see a number underneath your spell. Are spells, like, limited? Do you have yes. to go out of your way to grab more? They are ammo. Um, you can use a weapon at any time. The one that Sakuya has is a fan. And the one that Utsuki has is a knife. And the one that Abe no Seme has is a giant uh, Naganata. Um, okay, that's cool. You'll see it later. Um, yes, I think it's a Naganata. But that is the weakest attack. The spells are definitely stronger than your weapon is. Um, you can have two equipped at any one time, one on triangle and one on square. And... They are limited use, and you've seen me pick up a few specific ones as I've been going along, like the ones I have up right now. Hello. I call this Gaki, this enemy Chad, by the way. That's what my uh, chat calls him, and so that's what I end up calling him. Chad's very rude. I've lost runs to Chad before. <laughs> um, there are two types of spells. You have your regular spells that act like a projectile attack, and then you have summons which we will be seeing the summon actually fairly soon. At least the only one they were going to be using during this playthrough. All right, I'm going to see this. Hey, there's a ghosty goo. I'm going to get him. For some reason, you have to get rid of that ghost before you can go up here and trigger this cutscene because the cutscene doesn't show up if he's there. You have I'll... to clear out the room to progress. Exactly. So what we're doing right now is we're essentially just still exploring this temple, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to track down um, any leads. We have actually, in a cutscene, run into Utsuki already. Um, but she's still human, I think, at that point. At this particular point in the run, she is not. She has gotten eaten and merged with her sister. <laughs> I don't like how red this cave is. It looks like cave crawler. Either. Oh, I took out my earbud. Come on, dude. I'm waiting for this worm to try and to sort of join me up here, and he is not obeying me. Here he goes. Okay. I'll have you know that that was a very normal cave in cave crawler. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasted some time there because um, you saw that I was waiting. Normally, mm -hmm. I wouldn't wait that long. I would risk it. But just for safety reasons, I waited until I made sure that I could see that worm-like enemy. Because he can almost, not entirely instant kill you, but he can almost instant kill you with how powerful one of his attacks is. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to equip these two items here, and I'm going to use them in a very specific order. One ice spell and our first summon. So this is summon is called the Kugutsa Ona which I can't remember what Kugutsu means, but it's something, something woman. Um, Why? Why does she have a centipede for a neck? Um, so the Kuan spell, when people undergo it, so they're dead, they get put into a wicker basket like this, they merge with a silkworm, and then they're not dead anymore. But on the, uh, the downside is, if they don't merge, with new creatures and finish the spell, they start degrading into demons. Very hungry demons. So that's why she looks like a centipede. Oh, come okay. on. 
Usually, it usually only takes two casting of the summon spell to actually get through this fight, but I'm having very bad luck today. All right, so she's down. That is Lady Fujiwara. She is the second boss in the game. The first boss is Lord Fujiwara. They are the owners of this mansion and temple complex. They've had better days, but now we've done everything that we need to do in the temple. We have gone through here and figured out, mm, yeah, things are pretty sus around here too. So we're going to just run because this place is cursed and we don't like it anymore. <laughs> also, we got the item that we needed. If you've been paying attention to some of the item pickups I've been getting, I've been getting things called sacred cloths. These are the equivalent to uh, the emblem keys in Resident Evil 1. Like your sword key, your shield key, it's your sacred cloth Mercury, sacred cloth uh, Saturn, etc, etc. It's just a key that unlocks many doors. And now we have a new key for a new door. And it's going to take me a while because we have to backtrack quite a ways to get to this door. If I can actually get up this ladder. So if you have any donations, now's a really good time for them. Yeah, absolutely. I actually have some really, really cool news about donations, Ooh. which is that we have opened up the Cult of the Lamb name of follower reward, which means that for a minimum $10 donation, first come, first serve on those nine slots, you can enter a name for one of the followers of the golds in golds of the lamb we have actually already had a suggestion come in from a lovely human being known as critique quartz uh, who donates ten dollars and says mojo jojo please so one <laughs> of our followers is going to be named mojo jojo and if you would like to name a follower as well, you can type exclamation point donate in chat and go find that donation. Again, that is a minimum $10 donation to unlock that reward. And then there will be an entry field there for you. But also speaking about Cult of the Lamb, I do want to remind everybody that the other donation incentive that's coming up is the ability or the pull to name that name that cult name that cult <laughs> so you can choose the name in the poll um so we have some fantastic options in there like relation sheep or lady ba caters are two of our options and the really really cool thing that tiltify lets you do is with that ten dollar donation or really any donation on tiltify you can get a reward you can push towards an incentive and you can vote in a poll all at the same time so talk about some cool ways to make your donation go farther it's so cool i love that about tiltify so again that would be exclamation point donate in chat or scan that super cool qr code that you see on the screen all right so you guys just saw the uh screen go all wibbly wobbly and i sort of just stayed in place and did a it's called meditate is the um, command. That's the auto, that's the uh, healing command I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that I know about this game is because I stayed went through the door and just stayed there, that enemy didn't jump out at me until I started moving forward. If I had gone any further forward and he jumped out at me and hit me, it would have been a game over. All right, so we have met up with Utsuki, her sister, and Sakia's brother, whose name is... Uh, I can't remember. It starts with a D. Uh, so we're all going up to the mountain temple, trying to figure out what's going on. Now at this point, if you've played Yin Phase, you know that the sister is sus. If you haven't played Yin Phase, you're like, oh, the sister's fine. Tr she's not going to be fine for very long. All right. Now, despite the fact that Sakuya is the one who's running and everybody else is walking, we've already lost track of them. Now we see somebody who is going around here with a red jacket. <gasps> Utsuki has a red jacket. It must be her, right? I'm sorry. Did, did you just get a tutorial pop up for jumping? Shh, don't worry about it. Oh, hey, it's totally not Utsuki. And we got ambushed. Um, yes, it is a tutorial for jumping. It's not like jumping, jumping. It's more like, hey, go to this obvious cliff, press X so you jump across it. All right, now I'm going to, okay, we're fine, cool. I love that, we're like 30 minutes into the run and hey, just quick tutorial pop up. Yup, 
All right, so we've got some monkeys who are very rude. Now let's try not to get hit. Okay, cool. About 75% of the time I can get through there without getting hit. Um, now, what's coming up here is one of the reasons why Yang phase is hardest. There is an instant kill event coming up here. Oh, and no. I've got to make sure that I do it correctly. That is a vertigo event. We don't care about that. I'm going to go over to this window. I'm going to look through the window. There's a giant monkey. And we're going to meditate. If I go through the door right now, it's an instant kill. Now, Why? If, you look, if you look to the left of the screen, and you keep watching, I'm keeping my hand off the controller just in case, you see there's the enemy there. Now I can go into the room. How if, are you supposed to know that? Uh, you're supposed to screw it up once. <laughs> um, if you go into the room when, the, when that big monkey thing is in there, it's an instant kill. He grabs your head and crushes it. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah. Also, now we have to um, fight that big monkey. Oh, that's the wrong oh. button. <laughs> Do not exit the title. Okay. I'm so sorry if you heard that chat. My cat has decided bunnies are not enough on stream, and she needs to come <gasps> and say hello. All right. So one, more animals, please. Two. Four. Yelling for safety. Okay, I did it right. Cool. Um, the reason I faced away from him during that was to time when the fires get to him in order to get it so he doesn't uh, invincibility frame away my attack. <laughs> so that's one of the fights that is actually pretty consistent, which is nice because casually that's probably the hardest fight in the game. <laughs> but Amazing. I... Yeah, but I actually picked up the spell you use in that fight in the room with the instant kill. So you saw me pick up a mallet, and then I went and picked up a spell. That spell is just four castings, but it's enough to take out the boss as long as you time the attacks correctly. And there's no indicator on screen for invincibility frames, is there? Absolutely none. It's all based off of um, looking at the screen. Also, by the way, the lady with the white up here, that's Kareha, that's a sister. She's totally fine. Totally fine. Don't mm -hmm. worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> so they're just going to chill around that tree, which is, yes, one of the demon mulberry trees. Um, and they're just sending Sakuya over to listen to a sus sound, because during the cutscene that I skipped there, they heard a sus sound. So let's send Sakuya to take care of it. I'm sure nothing morally repugnant will happen to them while we're gone. Nothing at all. It's okay, chat. Everybody's gonna be fine. Yeah, this completely is fine. PS2 horror game. Everybody gets out okay. I promise. A PS2 FromSoft horror game. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing the proud FromSoft to edition where nobody can have a happy ending. No. Actually, actually, this game has a happy ending. Let's go. Yeah. We I'll get let to you... see it, too. Yeah, and you guys get to see it because the actual ending of this game... The ending that you get at the end of Yen Phase and Yang Phase isn't, it's a cliffhanger that goes directly into Kuan Phase. The end of Kuan Phase is where you get actual credits. So yes, we'll be getting a happy ending. Uh, but put an asterisk on that <laughs> and I'll get to it when we get to the end of Kuan Phase. All right. So you saw that the camera sort of panned behind Sakia in the other room to show that there was a dude there. He's in the same yellow as uh, Sakia, which means he must be one of our friends, right? No, he's not. He's, he's not, he's not friend. He, he is foe. Okay, so we're gonna skip this cutscene that's gonna happen here. Uh, don't worry about it. Nothing morally repugnant happened during that cutscene. It, it was just the sister um, having having a dance with the brother under the tree. How romantic. Yeah. While, while, while Utsuki, the other player character, was just having a nap. 
Also, I'm sorry, I have to point this out. I know we just watched the chant, but why is she running around this manor and this cave complex with no shoes on? Because she's a because uh, she's a special snowflake. All right, so we've got another boss fight against that sus dude. Ooh, I actually got hit there. That's bad. Okay. Oh, excuse no. you. Why am I not? Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. I'm used to having the um, attack on triangle or attack on the other button. There we go. Okay. So the great thing about this is the entire game I've been collecting these ice spells. We used two of them on the last fight, and we're going to use seven of them here. Okay. As long as I time them correctly, these seven attacks will kill the boss without him hitting me theoretically once. Even though I got hit because I completely put the spell in the wrong slot and was muscle memorying myself to almost dying. But, so that is uh, Dokai, I believe his name is. He was one of Sakuya's friends. No. He, he, he's not anymore. Um, because he got killed and put into a wicker basket and went through the Kuan spell. Except he didn't go through it all the way and started turning into an evil demon. He didn't get to turn into a mulberry tree. Oh no. Yep. So we had to take care of that. I love the secret room decorated in what seems to be blood writing. I'm uh -huh. sure that's just a nice place to hang out in. Oh no, it's absolutely great. It's fine. Everything's fine. This is fine. Mulberry juice. Yeah. Mulberry juice. Yeah, it's not blood. It's just mulberries. Don't worry about it. Okay. Are mulberries red? Actually reddish. They're like reddish black. They're sort of like uh, marine berries or blackberries. Except they grow on a tree. <laughs> okay. They're actually pretty common in the U.S. You, you've probably seen one before without knowing it. Okay, now I have to look up the mulberries, like, optimal range to see if I'm in it. <laughs> okay, so look at this blood stain. Um, not Everything's fine. By the way, the sister, the brother, and Yutsuki have vanished. Oh, hey, look. There's a wicker basket. We like those, right? Except we don't. Oh, hey, look. Kureha has fused with the brother. This is fine. I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, it's explained in a cutscene, I think in uh, Yin phase. If when somebody is inside the wicker basket fusing or eating another creature, if they get interrupted during that, they get deformed and it fails. And then what you just saw happens where they're like weirdly fused together and then they die. <laughs> Or at least the brother dies. Kureha doesn't. So yeah, Kureha attempted to eat Sakia's brother and failed at it. She's very good at failing at things. Oh my goodness. Yep. So I'm going to need everybody to look at the center of the screen. Just just stare at it. Don't All worry. Right, I'm staring at it. Nothing's going to pop up. And now I don't want to stare at the center of the screen. And then we're going to skip this cutscene. And hi, Kareha! How you doing? Oh, and she's gone. <laughs> yeah, she only pops up for that second. She's not going to appear here in just another moment. It's fine. Don't worry about it. There's so many different areas. There is. And a lot of what I'm doing right now is purely on... Oh, that's bad. Okay. Excuse you. I got caught by the fishes. That's only the second time that's ever happened to me. Um, if you take that the angle of your run, since this controls can be a little slippery. Also, everyone say hi to Kareha. Um, hi, Kareha. Bye, Kareha. The controls can be a little slippery when you're trying to do a, a turn. So sometimes you accidentally do a turn too wide, and that's what happened right then. Because I took the turn too wide and I got caught up on the fishies. So because that happened, just for safety, instead of going back the way we came, I'm going to go down here. And apparently, trigger a ghost because I forgot there's a vertigo there. But there happens to be some healing guns here. How now, I'm in, vertigo. Them? I'm in vertigo mode right now, which is fine. This is vertigo mode from getting a ghosty. So we're going to be fine. 
But no, you were gonna say something? I was just say, how nice of them to leave healing items out for you. I know, right? That area is actually where a boss fight during yin phases. Okay, I'm gonna skip this cutscene and then I'm taking my hand off the controller. And you can see that I'm walking. This entire screen is one giant vertigo um, trigger. And you wanna know what the problem about that is? It summons about 50 ghosts if you trigger it. <laughs> And it's almost, almost always a game over. But thankfully we have gone through the death room and it's fine. All right, so I picked up some iron wedges. We're gonna use those to uh, show how powerful and strong Sakuya is. Cause she just knocks down an entire wall like, like it ain't a thing with a tiny little iron wedge. She's so strong. She's so strong. All right, so if we'd been playing Yin Phase, you would have seen this area already. This is the Wicker Basket Nursery. This is where, spoiler, Utsuki's father and Kureha's father has been stashing people that he's been trying to force to go through the Kumon spell. So yes, in fact, the main bad guy is the dad. He's very rude. He's trying to create an immortal person. I believe that's what the storyline is. He's trying to create an immortal person and become immortal himself. But he's using, using his own children as the experimental subjects. And also everybody else in the manor. So all the demons we've been coming across, um, the crazy Kureha that's been chasing us, yeah, that's all because of this one dude who really, really wanted to get immortality. Oh my goodness. Of course. Yeah, and he got influenced by the evil Mulberry Demon twins who are like, hey, if you want immortality, you should try this. Okay, I'm gonna walk here because this worm up here, weirdly enough, I probably lost more runs to this freaking worm <laughs> than any because you don't have enough room to get around him and I'm playing this very safe. You don't have enough room to get around him until he crosses this threshold. I should have enough room. Okay, I do. And if you get caught by them and they do that weird attack where it looks like they fart out a um, bunch of red mist, um, that attack can hit you six, seven times at once. Which is kind of, kind of unfair. <laughs> Frums off the proud history of stun locking the players. Uh huh. Yep. And if you are not at full health, or at least near full health, and if you don't get into your inventory fast enough to do a heal, um, it's pretty much a game over. So at this point in the game, Sakuya or Utsuki, because the cutscene happens regardless of character, though it is different for each character. Domon, the father, the evil dad, comes into the room and spills his entire secret plan. His plan was to lure his own disciples, which includes Sakuya here, into this manor area under the guise of trying to exorcise all the demons, to purposefully get them all eaten by his daughters and others. Okay, I can actually get through here. I didn't think I could. Um, because he wants to complete this immortality spell. Because this man is extremely rude. But we're like, no, we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna run away. Because we don't like that, except we have a problem. Kureha caught up with us. And actually, we're about to hit time, believe it or not. Wow, this went by so fast. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. And time. <laughs> GG. <laughs> GG. So I'm going to let a little bit of this cutscene play out before we go directly into Kuan phase. Both Yin phase and Yang phase end with the same cutscene, pretty much. The beginning of it's a little bit different depending on it, but the cutscene itself is the same. Sakuya has found Utsuki. And she's like, oh no, we have to run away. Your sister's evil. But then she realizes uh, Utsuki has been made evil too. No. <laughs> and this is where both Yin phase and Yang phase end. 
And now we get to go into Kuon phase and figure out what happened. Not that it's going to help any of it make any sense, but. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go directly into Kuon phase. Are you guys ready with the timer? I, I can't see if it's been reset or not. Are you guys ready with the timer? Um, yep. All right. Good to go? Cool. So timer's going to start just like with the last one when I hit yes on here. So three, two, one, go. All right. So in this one, we are playing as Abe no Seime. Now, Abe no Seime was a real person, um, except the historical Abe no Seime was a man. But we're playing as a gender swapped Abe no Seime. We are acting as an exorcist who heard the story about this creepy, creepy mansion and was like, mm, this is all semen kind of sus. I'm going to go figure out what's going on. Because as it turns out, Abe no Seime is a former colleague of the evil dad. So she needs to go figure out what's going on and put an end to all of it. Because as it turns out... Domon's entire thing, the dad's entire thing about sacrificing his own kids to get immortality, to do the special spells and everything, um, was all because he was butthurt that Abe no Seime was better than him at magic. I mean, like, <laughs> why didn't he just ask for tutoring lessons or something? Like, I know, right? His it would have been fine. His entire problem is that he's just he's just butthurt that, that Abe no Seime is better than him. You didn't have to tear down an entire manor's worth of people, sir. <laughs> or sacrifice his own kids. Because, no, as it turns out, the reason why the sister was so evil is because before you can do the Kumon spell on a person, before you can put them in the wicker basket and turn them into possibly either a demon or a mulberry tree or both, they have to be dead. You put a dead body into the wicker basket and it brings them back to life like a zombie. Um, except... The sister, Kureha, was led to believe that the other sister, Utsuki, pushed her off a cliff. She did no such thing. So that's why the, uh, the other sister, Kureha, was so evil. Because she spends almost the entire game thinking this and only finds out about it at the very end. But, oh, wait, I was wrong. Friend, is it rude to use your daughters to become immortal? I just saw the poll. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been running the polls all day. Hi. Hello. I had, one, I had one earlier that was, do you like mulberries? And then after you explained the game, I was asked again, do you like mulberries now? <laughs> How much beautiful. of a change was there? Exactly. There wasn't, actually. Everybody still liked them. <laughs> Not fair. Proud of you guys. Oh. Do we have time for a quick donation? Yes, we have time for about mm, two or three. Cool. Well, I have a special one from Dresden Nova, $20, and it says Tan Tanagerines for life. <laughs> Dresden is one of my mods on Twitch. Which, by the way, mm. I only really stream over if you were to follow me over on my Twitch. I stream once a week from about 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Occasionally I'll do other streams as well, but that's the one that I'm consistent on because uh, I have a full-time job <laughs> and I'm a little busy during the week. But if you want to check me out, that's when, I'll, that's when I'll be around. Do we get bunny peeks during your stream? My rabbits. So Garrus and Tally here, they have their own dedicated <gasps> webcam on my live streams. Fantastic. It's pretty great. And by also, the way, I sometimes, Nova. I sometimes bring out chinchillas as well, by the way. That's you you have the bet you have the best you have the best furry creatures on your stream. It's so <laughs> cute. Yeah. But Dresden Nova did a uh redeem the reward for naming a follower. So uh the name that they specified is and let me know if uh, this maybe sounds familiar. Uh, Scarlet Anger <laughs> is what... <laughs> Dresden, I swear! <sighs> it's, it's Scarlet Two T's, isn't it? 
Oh, you bet it is. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you back later. Um, it's a well-known thing in my streams that I have a vehement hatred for my eternal nemesis, the Scarlet with two T's. Because my name is Scarlet with one T, and my entire life it gets misspelled as Scarlet with two T's. It's it's the little things in life. <laughs> and completely understandable. Yeah. So and it gets even better because my username is Miss Scarlet Tanager. But people who don't know better sometimes read it as Miss Scarlet Anger. <laughs> because they put the T in Tanager with Scarlet. Very rude. All right. Truly a self-fulfilling prophecy. So this entire playthrough for Kuan is just the race to the boss fight. We are at the boss fight. So I'm going to focus. Oh, I'm going to focus real quick. All right, this is how I do it. Okay. There's a couple methods that you can use to get through this fight. I'm using one that I actually just recently came up with. Let's see if I can do it correctly. Again, sir, if you had just asked for some tutoring lessons or something, maybe this whole fighting to the death in a burning shrine could have been avoided. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to time my attacks to get past his um, iframes, specifically. Which, thankfully, this guy actually has visible iframes. <laughs> kind of you from soft yeah now if i'm being feel free to commentate on the lovely scenery at all while i'm trying to focus on this or give or give some donations either one yeah joe do you have anything you want to say yeah, I did just want to remind people that uh, since our next run is in fact Cult of the Lamb, you are running out of time to name your followers and vote in the poll to name the cult. So if you would like to do either of those things, kind of get that in really, really quick before we start the run, you can type exclamation point donate in chat and that will pull up our Tiltify link and get you set up to donate. Just a, another reminder that naming a follower is a minimum of a $10 donation, at which point when you do that, it will pull up a little redeem entry spot for you to enter your follower's name of choice. And yes, there already was one Scarlet Anger, so, and Mojo Jojo. So we have a very fun cult going on. Just a really interesting group of people gathered here in this cult. Mm-hmm. The dinner party is and turning out there we interesting. Go. Oh. All right. So time is going to be as soon as I enter exit this area, and I'll let the ending cutscene play out a little bit. Um. And time. Let's go. So that is Kuan phase. Now, as you can see, Sake has a bit has gone through a bit of issues. At this point in the game, uh, Utsuki has completely fallen to the Kuan spell and is turned into a demon. The poor girl, because she's actually completely an innocent character who just got used. Now, the downside is, in a cutscene that I skipped after the dad died, she comes running in and grabs his corpse and runs to the wicker basket, throws the corpse in, and then jumps in after it. Vid is the last body that she needs to consume to finish the spell. So, Utsuki actually is the only character in the game who completely finished it by consuming enough people, even though it wasn't her fault. So now we get to see what happens when you go through the entirety of the Kuon spell. I ignore the Mulberry Twin. So just for time's sake, I'm going to skip this and we're going to get straight to it. Now, essentially what you missed was Abe no Seimei was like, we need to burn the wicker basket because it's evil demon stuff and I'm a demon slayer. And Saki was like, no, Utsuki's an innocent person, I swear. <laughs> and somehow that convinced Abe no Seimei. And so Utsuki 
was born from the wicker chest is a brand new mulberry tree. Except she's not an evil mulberry tree. She's a good mulberry tree. And she's a cute little girl. <laughs> and she gets to have and she gets to have a paper doggo as a pet. Yeah, the paper dog. The paper doggo. Good dog. Yep. The the paper doggo is actually an attack summon that you use during Yin phase. That was a gift to Utsuki from Sakuya. If I wasn't skipping, you know, all of the cutscenes, you'd know all this. <laughs> but um, that's going to be it for Ku for Kuan. Which, by the way, I didn't even mention this the entire time. This is the rarest game on the PlayStation 2. Um, it costs roughly $800 to $1,000 to get a copy of this game in English, in the US version. So if you're thinking of super rare games to take a look at and you've got way too much money to throw around, because <laughs> this game never got a digital release. There's a reason why you don't see this game a lot, even though it's near and dear to my heart and it's actually a really fun speed run. There's a reason why most of the speed runs for this on the leaderboard are on the emulator. <laughs> but that was Kuon, the rarest PS2 game and totally the best FromSoft game, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, come follow me over on Twitch. Again, I stream on Sundays from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The bunnies have their own dedicated webcam, and the chinchillas make a appearance occasionally. Chinchillas, which, chinchillas. I mean, do you guys want to see a chinchilla before we end it? I don't think we have time, unfortunately. Kay. No. All right, then. Yes, but... Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. Then people have to come follow me on Twitch if you guys want to see chinchillas. Of course. Okay. Give her a follow. I was Critique Court. This was so much fun. Thank you for letting me be a commentary buddy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, both of you, for the phenomenal show mm -hmm. that has been super duper amazing uh and now i i don't know about you all but i'm kind of craving like a mulberry pie or something does that sound good <laughs> um you need a little bit of this has been miss scarlet tanager and critique quartz with kuan yang phase and then kuan kuan phase and those perfect little bunnies in the background we are going to go get set up for our next run while we look at these perfect angels so we will be right back Bunnies, bunnies, bunnies. <laughs>